All right. So in today's lesson, we are going to reflect on the crucifixion and death of our blessed Lord. This is the, the last of the sorrowful mysteries. This is the culmination of his passion and death, where having been crucified after carrying his cross to Golgotha, he hangs in agony for three hours before he dies in obedience to his Father and out of love for us. And so in this lesson, we're going to consider starting with, consider uh, the first we'll reflect on the crucifixion and death of our blessed Lord. All right, so the final sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion and death of our blessed Lord. Our Lord dies on the cross for our sins. So what is the cross? If we want to think about uh, our Lord's death, it helps to consider what is the cross. Well, the first thing is the cross is pain. Obviously, it was a very painful way to die. Um, he is humiliated by being stripped naked. His hands and his feet are pierced. Uh, when you uh, hit your, what we call the funny bone, which we all know is not funny because of how painful it is, if you think about it, the same nerves that go through that part of the arm are where the nails would have gone through his hands as well, and so it would have caused him all kinds of pain. Um, he would have been hung up on this cross on the rough wood, and with all of his wounds, uh, it would have been very painful. So the cross is certainly pain. And so we, that G we know that Jesus understands pain and suffering because of his cross. But the cross is also obedience. Um, God sends his son to die for us um, out of obedience. Not because he needed to die uh, to save us, but because he wanted Jesus to be obedient to the point of death, to the point of suffering all of this, because Adam was disobedient. And so, even though, because Adam could not make up for his disobedience, because even though Adam is a human being, he was offending against an infinite God. So, a human being cannot make up for an infinite sin. So, Jesus, who is God, makes up for this infinite sin, so to speak, by being obedient completely in the way that Adam was disobedient. But... The cross is also, it's not just pain and it's not just obedience, but even more of that, it's love. Jesus could have saved us very simply. Anything he did in obedience to God would have been saving. But he wanted to do this, to die the way he did, to suffer what he did, to show us just how much he loves us. We all know that the more someone sacrifices for us, the more they love us. The more we love someone, the more we're going to sacrifice for them. And so. Jesus shows just how much he loves us by dying on the cross for us. Um, there's two other things to, to point out here, and we'll end with these. One is that uh, one of the things that the Gospels teach us is, in the way they describe Jesus' crucifixion, is that it is the sacrifice of the Passover lamb. Remember, back in the Exodus, the uh, Passover lamb and the sacrifice of the lamb is what saves the Israelites from the last plague, the death of the firstborn. And so on the cross, Jesus is offering himself as the new Passover lamb to save us from sin and death. And we also see in the gospel that Jesus gives his mother to the church. She's our mother because we are part of Jesus and she is his mother, but on the cross he does this formally. And again, he calls her woman here, not out of disrespect, but because he's calling her the new Eve, that is the mother of all of the living who are in Jesus. And so she, he's the new Adam, she is the new Eve, and our mother as well then. All right, now, it's very appropriate then, as we reflect on the death of Jesus, that we also look at the Holy Eucharist. Because remember, the Holy Eucharist is, the Mass is the sacrifice of Christ's body and blood for us. And <clears throat> because uh, Christ does not die again, what happens is that at Mass we are able to be present at Calvary where Jesus dies in a mystical way, in a mysterious way. He makes that sacrifice present for us here and now in the Holy Eucharist. So we can participate in Christ's sacrifice, we can worship Him, we can adore Him on the cross, and also receive His body and blood in Holy Communion. So let's go ahead and look at these questions from the Catechism that relate to the Holy Eucharist.